This is the Pete and Sebastian Show with Pete Corielli and Sebastian Maniscalco. The Sebastian Show, baby, we are back. I hope you had a great Christmas. Um, Sebastian Maniscalco hanging as always, brother. What's going on? Let's get down to it, man. What's up? Yeah, How you doing? You let, right? Let's get down to it. Um, yeah, let's... Uh, I got some stuff cooking, some stuff percolating here on the stove. So why don't we get into uh, your life, right. your uh, your situations got, over there. I got, I got a simple, quick legal question. I want, I, want, I want to shoot right out of that. I have a long driveway. And lately, what my move has been, I don't know why, I'm just into it, but I back out fast, right? But I back out, but then right before I reach the sidewalk and the road, I hit the brakes, and I look at my camera to make sure nobody's coming, and then I continue, right? But for like, I don't know, 30-foot stretch, I fuck, I slam them, and I back out hard. And the other day I was doing that, and I don't even look when I do it. I just like, pff, 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 and then I, and then I do the camera look, hit the brakes. Let let's say some guy, and I've done this with my dog. I, I'm walking my dog, and like my dog is like on on someone's front lawn, and I got, but I'm still like on their driveway. Let's say like some guy's walking his dog early one morning, and he's on my driveway, not not the sidewalk, my driveway, up clearly on towards my property. I'm not looking. I'm on the phone. I get in. I slam it. I back out. If I hit somebody and kill them in my driveway, am I in trouble? Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, Fuck what you guys in my driveway. <laughs> what the fuck Patrick, you doing in my driveway? You're coming. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> So, bro, if you kill anybody, it's like it's like saying, you know, if, if somebody, I mean, you, wh- why? Because they're on your property, you're now exempt from killing a person. No, I'm saying to the judge, bro, I don't look. I hit the, I slam it, well, I, and he goes, "Give me a look." I go, "No, no." Right before I get to the sidewalk, I hit the brakes. I look both ways, like every other gentleman, and then I back out. I go, "But there's no reason for me to go slow for that 30, 40 feet." I, I hit him hard, and I don't look. And I know I don't have to look for, like, two seconds. That's how long it takes. So, like, I'm like, boom, boom, break. Bro, I don't like And some guy's move. on my property not making any noise, and I hear a boom. I, I feel terrible. I gave my condolences to the family. I barely sleep at night, but I'm not in trouble. Am I? <laughs> Your Honor? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, 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 I don't like this, this no-look back out. I, I'm really I, I, having a problem with this. I love it. I feel like it's the freedom of having property. Part of the freedom <laughs> of having property is for two seconds, I can floor my fucking car and I don't have to look at nobody because you shouldn't <laughs> be on this shit. That's right. Isn't that great? It's like my little Yellowstone, bro. <laughs> <laughs> and your driveway, forget it. I could get my roof up to 65 on your driveway. We got like It's a runway, baby. <laughs> Seriously, I, uh, you 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 have a bad meeting. You bang a right into your driveway. You just get off the phone. Something pissing you off. You know your kids aren't home, and you just whatever. You chirp the wheels and you gun it down your driveway. As you bang a left, somebody's trespassing, and they're they're on your front lawn. Lo- they're on your driveway, and like they're looking the other way with headphones on, and boom, they go right over the hood. I mean, you know, how could you be in trouble for that? <sighs> Well, here, I'll, I'll give you another scenario. I got some construction going on right now. Let's say I bang it down the driveway. Guy's coming out with his lunch to go sit down. Right. I hit no. this guy. He he dies. Oh, you're in trouble. My, that's why I went trespasser. This guy. Oh, you're looking is for someone on my that property. Should... Okay. Yeah, he shouldn't be on my property. This guy's walking his dog, and he ends up on my driveway, unbeknownst to me. I'm not saying you know, not a UPS pick, nothing. Just someone who. There's okay. no reason they should be on my property. I wasn't looking. Why would I look? Okay, so the question here is, if you're trespassing and get killed on the property, right? are you responsible? Give you another one, yes. Let's say you decide you want to start mowing your own lawn. You're going with a drive on John Deere early one morning, headphones on. Some hiker was doing acid. He passed out on your lawn. Wow! You go right over him with the mower. 
Are you going to jail? I'm mowing my lawn, guy. It's my. I mean, I don't even. So yeah, that's basically what I'm saying. You trespass on my property and you accidentally get killed while I'm going about my normal routine. <laughs> I shouldn't be held. I think you know legal. what, bro? I'm telling you, in yeah. the beginning of the, if this was a court case, yeah, in the beginning of the court case, I would say you are 100 percent guilty. But the argument you're making. I'm kind of coming over to your side now. That's what I'm, I'm saying, Your Honor. If a man can't be careless on the privacy of his own property, when can he? You know what I'm saying? I'm not firing guns. I'm mowing my lawn, listening to a little Maroon 5 day. <laughs> oh, man. No, I, you bring up a great point. I don't know. If you if you gun it out of the, the garage and there's someone just hanging out on the driveway yeah. and they're not supposed to be there. Now, listen, I mean, yeah. if, if I'm on your driveway, let's right. say I come up and go, oh, it's a beautiful house, right? Yeah. And yeah. I walk up on the driveway to get a closer look. Mm-hmm. Is that trespassing? I, you know, I don't, I don't think so, right? I mean, like, I'll, like my dog sometimes, I got it on like this fifteen foot, bring you know, retractable uh, leash, and sometimes when I'm on the sidewalk, it gets a, a sniff of something, and I could tell it's like really into whatever it's sniffing, and it's taking him all the way to the edge of their bushes, which is going to make me have to go on their driveway, their front lawn a little, and once in a while with the dog, a little guy's onto something. I'm like, I, I, I hate to pull him back. You know, three feet from the bush. He's like, guy, yeah, it's fucking right there. So I'll go like three or four or five feet on someone's front lawn or driveway. I'm just letting the dog do. There's a pickup there. This guy, what if he's already in his pickup? And I didn't even know he was already in there taking a, a phone call. And then he just goes, all right, I'll be right there, Tommy. You know, is he in trouble for backing over me for that? Well, I mean, let, let's put it on the opposite. Like Jackie's taking the dog out, right? Mm -hmm, She's on mm -hmm. somebody's driveway. Yeah. She gets run over, killed. Do you go, what the hell is she doing on the driveway? Or yeah, I, 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 right. do you go to the guy, don't you look when you come out? <sighs> That's a good one. You know, like, <sighs> I mean, and the guy he shows. The guy, tell, the guy tells you, look. I'm on the privacy of my own home. I go 50 right. down the driveway every morning. Right. The fuck was she there for? What kind of, I think I'd be like, what kind of animal does 50 <laughs> down his own driveway? <laughs> there were kids running around. They don't know where one driveway ends and one's. Bro, you're, 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 you're enlightening me. You're enlightening me. I got to I gotta slow down on the driveway guy. I got to They could be a kid there. They could be a kid could, there. This it could is be ridiculous. your own kid. Listen, there was a story. This was coming out of, I want to say, Arizona. I forget the guy's name. And when I read it, I was just, it was a heartbreaking story. Tight end for, I don't know, what NFL football team. Backed out of his driveway. Didn't look. Ran over his own child. Killed the child. I don't know how the hell you go on from that. It, that's... That's devastating. So, who knows? Sadie's in the driveway. You don't know, and you know, like, I, I, bro, I think, and, and not even looking. I mean, this is, this is, that's, but that it was like it was my one, you know, reckless move of my life on a daily basis. It was, it made me feel like a little fucking backing out and flooring it. And I liked the. It was like a tension release. It was like my own little mini purge. You know what I'm saying for a minute. But now I'm enlightened, guy. I mean, I didn't even. I I got to admit, <clears throat> I tend to do it when I know the kids are. Uh, I have no excuse. I, no, you have no excuse. I, to I be honest with somebody. you, could have killed somebody. If I'm a neighbor, if I'm a neighbor, and I'm outside having my morning coffee, and I see a guy come out of his garage at. <laughs> Speed. <laughs> right. Well, what's your take on this? You see that, and you're just about to go, what the hell? And then he hits the brakes five feet 
before he reaches the sidewalk and does a slow back out. You're like, what the? Oh, all right. I don't know. Do I have a problem with that? <laughs> you, know, you know what I'm saying? And I'd be like, also, on the other hand, I mean, what kind of woman am I married to that's standing on a driveway? A guy starts up his Ford and you don't even hear it and you're right there. You got the tailpipe hitting you. You know what I'm saying? when we, I'm getting back to my wife, how I'd be mad if she got hit. <laughs> What do you want to eat tonight, guys? Maybe you want a home-cooked favorite, but don't feel like going to the store? We've all been there. Or you want something exciting and new, but it would, but it would be great to stay in tonight. DoorDash connects you with everything you want, whenever and however you want it. Along with restaurants you love, you can also use DoorDash to get groceries and other essential items delivered. With DoorDash, you can get drinks, snacks, household items. It's not just food. Do you know about that, Sebastian? Listen, I've been using this thing. I got to tell you, it's unbelievable. Who the hell wants to go find parking, go into the store, get behind some idiot who who needs a, a price check, who needs this, who needs that. Have someone do it for you while you spend time with your beautiful family every time you place an order for pickup or delivery you're setting off a chain reaction that helps give back to the people who make your neighborhood unique with over 300,000 partners you could support your neighborhood go-tos or choose from your uh, favorite national restaurants like Popeye's Chipotle and Cheesecake Factory right Pete Oh, man, with DoorDash, you're not just getting the things you love, as Sebastian said, but you're getting them within an hour, baby, because that's how fast they get this stuff to you. For a limited time, our listeners can get 50% off up to a $20 value and $0 delivery fees when you download the DoorDash app and enter the cast. 50% off up to a $20 value and zero delivery fees. When you download the DoorDash app in the App Store and enter code THECAST. And don't forget, that's code THECAST for 50% off up to a $20 value and zero delivery fees with DoorDash. Subject to change, terms apply. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, man. I, I, I that's think embarrassing. We, I think we got to slow down and also... I wanted to get your take on your technique when backing out. Mm -hmm. Do you feel when you're looking at the camera in the car that that's a good enough angle to just rely on the camera alone without you looking back? Do you ever remember back in the day? You put it in reverse, and you did that move where you had your hand on the, I don't know, yeah, yeah. right here, and then you did one of these, and then this, and then go. It's such a beautiful move. Yeah, we've discussed that. I know. It was, it was art. It was art. Everybody, and you would do the talk while you're doing it. Like, you know, you're looking that way, but as you're talking, you're going, yeah, we're still going to the, to the thing, right? Yeah, like that. But- you know, I look you know, at the, yeah. Right, well, I'm sorry, I got to interrupt here. You know, what a beautiful move that is, and I know we discussed this on the cast, but not this part. When you're doing that move, right, and you have a passenger in the car next to you, and they're getting a shot of your neck, right? Like they're here. Yeah. Your neck like that, and they're and you're leaning over, and you could almost. See smell their cologne uh, yeah, i gotta yeah. tell you when i was dating back when i used to pick up girls you know at their house and i had to back out of their driveway or what have you yeah i gotta tell you that's a beautiful way to start the date yeah. just just the girl kind of seeing you in that position i think for me it's like wow what a man Absolutely. look at this guy adam's apple I mean, and you know, they say this isn't even a real term, but I still use it. It's an alpha male move because there's two ways you can back out. Can you imagine if I was a, I was a woman or a girl 
and I got in the car with my date and he's like, are you ready to go to the movies? And I'm like, yeah. And he's got it back out and he goes like this and this and he's, and he does this. I'd be like, you know what? Don't even back it out. I ain't fucking going anywhere with you. But that move, the arm behind her headrest, oh. she's seeing all this, a little chest hair coming out of the top, getting a little sprinkle of that, seeing the thin belly, seeing the muscles in the forearm holding the top. Oh, my God. It's like a show in itself. <laughs> yeah, man. I'm right there. Bro, we could do a whole bit. God, we're unbelievable. We could do a whole bit about... <laughs> All the great moves you'll never see again due to technology. Oh. Like like with the phone, the move I used to love is when you had those phones, not on the wall, but you know, the one that would sit on a desk, and, 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 and people would take the phone and curl it in their ear and then do the two finger with the whole fucking phone oh. itself. And, with and the in this hand, and they got the cord here, and they go, no, <laughs> hey, Billy, tell me. And, and they do a walk away from everyone around like, oh, God. He's taking it mobile. Then they do a little, they do a little flip to make the whole cord like get over a desk chair or something so they can get out. But all within the flow of the conversation, cradling the phone by the ear. You'll never see that move again. There's no need for it. <laughs> ah, you know. Oh I love that. God, bro, that's a great move. Man. I forgot about that. Where you take that. You take the actual uh, the the home of the phone, <laughs> and you, you take it from the desk, and you take it from the, the couch. Oh, and you're and you and you're as you're going, you're you're just going through <laughs> obstacles with that cord. Yeah, beautiful. And, and then they want you to write something down. Say right, you go like this. You go, hold on, phone goes over here, carry the base here. Got the phone out and you go, go ahead, go ahead. Three, <laughs> two, one. <laughs> oh, shit. Never see that move again. Now it's just, text it to me. Text it to me. <laughs> Fucking bro. I was watching a movie the other day about the 70s. What a great time to grow up, bro. Great oh, time. bro. It's, it's, it, it was, there's nothing, there's nothing like it. Here's a problem I'm having. I don't know if we discussed this talking about technology. What's your take on taking FaceTime calls out in public with no earphones on? I, I saw this at the airport. It drove me crazy, right? Yeah. I'm sitting at the gate and uh guy guy got on a FaceTime call and I could hear that guy's phone the whole phone conversation back and forth. Right. It's, yeah. It's, I I don't know if they don't care. And that's another thing, too. I'll be honest with my own, even with my own wife. I, I, if I couldn't have other people being able to hear her because she could say something oh God. that like, that could like definitely make me have to be like, they'd be like, you, you know, somebody that says shit like that. <laughs> <laughs> Noah, I can't wait to get home to a guy. <laughs> <laughs> you know i have to and my wife doesn't she doesn't doesn't click in like uh she was in an uber right and she yeah. called me and we're talking right and then like i felt like something something right i go am i on speaker she goes yeah <laughs> you're gonna put me on speaker with another person in the car <laughs> like I'm surprised my wife doesn't know. Oh, right. He could say something that could literally get me zero stars as a passenger, right? <laughs> you could say something that would make the Uber driver put it in park and go, "Can't get out." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I hear you, but I mean, so um, the other thing too is. It's seeming like, like, are you FaceTiming more people now than calling them? Like to, to have like, like chat, like when you go calling some of the chat, just small talk, is it FaceTime or is it still call? I got certain people I FaceTime and then there's certain people I just talk onto the phone. My father, I have to FaceTime because he needs to see me and I need to see him. So basically my father, my sister. And 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 my mother, they're all on FaceTime. My my that side. Obviously Lana's on FaceTime. 
But here, here, here's something. When you're on FaceTime, and then you could hear the person, but you can't see them, right? Uh huh. You always have to mention to the person, "Oh, I, I can't, I can't see you. Like, like some, something, something's wrong. Like, what the fuck? I can't see you, but you could still, still hear them." What is? Is it have we become so spoiled that if you FaceTime someone and something goes wrong where the connection is not as strong to get the video through, but you could hear them, that you have to reset the entire call? Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, right. If you call me yeah. and I'm not, I'm not seeing you, but you could hear me, I go, I can't see you. And then right. we go, oh, okay, oh, let me call you back. Why do we got to right. see the person though? Yeah, yeah. No, I mean, I'm, I'm not, that, I asked you because I'm still not doing a lot of FaceTime, but I feel like it's going that route. And then you're right. Are we getting so reliant now on, I need to see you when I talk to you, that if I if the video goes down, it's almost like you act like we're doing Morse code now. <laughs> Fucking calm down. We can still talk, right? So, like the other but, day, you texted me, which was, I appreciate the text because it shows that you know me. You go, I would have FaceTimed you, but it's after eight. And you say that yeah, I knew you'd be wearing your, your Walmart glasses. Yeah, you because know, I wear my glasses. I take my contacts out. But you, why would you have FaceTime me? That's where we're going now. It's I feel like it's too much pressure. The seeing, I like the talking. Well, like like we're doing this right. This is almost like a yeah. FaceTime video. So I feel if I'm gonna call you outside of this, and it's just an audio call, that yeah. that I'm losing a lot of the nuance to the conversation because I'm used to this with you right right so and to be honest with you if we facetime together and by the way to fill in the listeners there was a point that we didn't do the podcast for about i don't know 19 days we took a break and i and i had to call you because i felt like i don't know and it's weird when we call each other outside this because you'll start on a story and you're like ah, i gotta save it for the cast we can't even talk to one another. I know, I know. Outside I know. One, of this, yeah, because we're burning. We might be burning through content. Uh, yeah, I know. It's different when we're hanging out. I find because you know we're in the moment when we're face to face. But yeah, when we're on the phone. You know, you go to say some vice versa, and you're like, "Oh man, that's like a funny thing to say for the cast to get your reaction on it." So. But also with the FaceTime with you, why why it would be a little bit of a, a change of pace for me is I would love to see a Pete Corielli in his kitchen migrate on yeah. FaceTime <clears throat> to the living room and in in that process just see what's in the background. Oh man, I hear. You. Well, we're up for Christmas. It's decorated, so we got to do a Christmas call Facetime. Well, uh, between now and before New Year's, I'll uh, walk through and show you everything, it, man. I, I don't want to. I don't want you to show me. Uh, I just you, want to do a Facetime, notice? and I just want to see. Oh, he's got a mistletoe. <laughs> right, but then it makes me think. This guy not even listening to me. He's just looking at what's all around instead. No, no, I no, wish I was in the middle of nowhere. I'd love for you to see the house and you and Lana one night staying. That'd be awesome. Oh, no, that would be great. I mean, I, is it sad that Patrick's been to your house and I haven't? <laughs> I know, right? That's crazy. That's crazy. I think about that sometimes when I'm in here. I'm like, oh, my God, I forgot Patrick was here. <laughs> Nobody comes here. Um, <clears throat> Pete's got a beautiful house. Thank you. Thank you, bro. Yeah, no, we'll we'll have to make it out there uh, one of these days. Okay, l let's let's get into this. I I uh, <laughs> I've been watching the World Cup, and by the time this airs, the World Cup is going to be over. But I've okay. been immersed in World Cup. And I took a particular um, liking to some of the coaches. All right. Mm -hmm. As you well know, I'm enthralled with the Japanese culture. I think everything the Japanese do is excellent. I didn't know that. I don't think I knew that, man. I didn't know you were enthralled. Bro, if I could be Japanese. Big word, enthralled, bro. 
the it, it goes it goes Italian, and then Japanese for me. All right. Oh, and, if I come like, back any other person, I'm coming back Japanese. All right. Wow, really? Love That's it. funny because I was just saying to Jackie recently, and I'm into the Japanese culture. I really am, but I was thinking it's just too outside the box for me. I think they, yeah, the bathrooms, the whole. I think I could slide into. Uh, I was telling Jackie the day ago. I think I would have been all right being French, just drinking strong coffee, smoking cigarettes, living by by the Eiffel Tower, walking my French dog. I think I would have. <sighs> Bro, they eat bread just walking down the sidewalk, man. Oh. <laughs> they live a long time. Women are frisky. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what are you, what, what, what are you so enamored with, with the Japanese culture that you'd want that to be, your, your, you know, your plan B? Quiet. 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 Really? Quiet. What makes I'm, you think the Jap Japanese are quiet? They're quiet. You ever see Japanese family go out? You ever see a Japanese family at a restaurant? I don't know if I have person person. I can't really like say enough yeah. about it. You know why? Quiet. Why? Wow. Is that right? Right? Maybe that's why they like migrated from China. Everyone's so loud in China the way they talk. They're like, let's go. Quiet country. Quiet. <laughs> Everything they, they, they do. They, it, I find them to be classy. They're very classy and sophisticated and like neat. Everything's yes. neat. Yeah, they're classy. It's a classy culture. Great Just the way. food. Yeah, the too. food. The oh. food is neat. You have sushi, neat. You right. never get sushi and go, it's this slop. It's right. organized. The fucking thing right. is organized. Right? right. The fish, the the way it lays on the rice. Do you know how the mentality you have to have to put that together? So I want to put up the Japanese coach up on the screen right now so you could see what I'm talking about, all right? Okay, here it is. Take a look at this guy. Now, if My I were goodness. to show you this photo, Pete, mm -hmm. and I didn't tell you he was a soccer coach, yeah, what yeah. would you say this guy does for a living? Japanese diplomat at the White House for a state dinner. Oh, yeah. I diplomat. Mean, Look at the way this guy it's, came to the game. I mean, this I mean, this guy's standing on grass. What, 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 if we it, it, that, listen, I'm just honestly a little tweak on the hair, and this guy could be a Japanese model <laughs> in, in that suit. In that suit, <laughs> I mean, tailored suit. Look at wow. it. Beautiful. He's got a, wow. a, 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 a I don't know what is a button on it and then i think he's got a well does he have one of those buttons on the uh on the tie there if you zoom in on the tie uh or is that just a piece of the tie i don't know what it is I, I think it's a tie clip i think and he's also got a vest which is just fantastic yeah it, it, it's stunning and then he's writing on some pad of paper okay so this is what i'm talking about beautiful well put together everything pressed Japanese. Now, I'm going to show you the American coach. All right. All right let, let's get him up here. Oh, okay. is that him? It's him. See, you didn't. Oh, my. you got to ask. Yeah. I, no. I, I, I was about to say, no, Patrick, not the trainer, the coach. What? <laughs> <laughs> this this is, guy looks this like is... he's going to go do a Starbucks run. I would like, love to know what he would say if you showed him the Japanese coach. <laughs> the Starbucks run. <laughs> <laughs> What's the take on this, though? Like, why Why is he doing that? Like, why does he feel that's okay? Well, I don't, I mean, I, like, listen, to each his own. You want to dress casual, you want to dress nice. I'm just saying, I'm into coaches. All right. Pat Riley, for example, back oh, in the sweet. 80s, early 90s, right. comes to the game and the guy looks like he fell out of a GQ magazine. There's something to be said about a man who presents himself in a way that it has a sense of a, an authority figure. And you put a suit on a guy 
automatically he now rises ahead of anybody else who's not wearing a suit. Yeah. I, right? I, I, it makes it clear, too, that you're, you know, you're not on the team. Landry used to wear the suit uh, the, with the, the Cowboys. It was like the start of it. It was phenomenal. I even love, too, when, like, Riley or these guys that do wear the suits, when they get going, they're yelling at the ref, and the tie is just dangling while they're yelling, you know, and they're like, oh, and then they come back and fix it and shit. It's like, it's, I always love that. But, um, you know, now they dress right. like they're on the team. I don't want to guess visually. I don't want to guess who the coach is. <laughs> uh, yeah. All right, that, I hear you, man. That, the U.S. coach is is a, a pair of shorts away from being a player, right? What does the Italian coach wear? Oh, this is what what was awful. The Italians didn't even make the cup. Wow, that's a shame. They weren't even in the cup. But the Italian coach, believe me, I think I saw him last year. Fully full suit. All the European men suits. Wow. So, the so guy, what, like the guy is, is from it, Senegal, yeah. Senegal coach. He's another one that didn't dress up. Me, me personally, I just like to see a suit on a coach. Right, right. It's weird they don't do it in baseball though, which is kind of silly. They look kind of silly when they wear the uniform. I mean, but when it, when a sixty eight year old man. <clears throat> Is wearing a uni a baseball uniform. I I look at it as 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 the it's like it's like dress up like oh look grandpa <laughs> right, came right, out right. in his in his baseball know, outfit he I used know. to wear. I, Wouldn't it be nice to just see the manager like he's gonna call for a change of pitch and he comes walking out to the mound pointing <laughs> to the bullpen and he's wearing like a beautiful Armani suit. <laughs> that would be so fucking nice, man. Is that a is that a major league baseball requirement that the manager dress like he's on the team? It must be. I mean, it must be. That's just nobody what they else. Do. Nobody else is dressed any other way. No, I man. gotta I gotta find that out. That's that's gotta be something, hey, Patrick. If you can, you have see to. If, have, yeah, you must have to wear. The, that's a league dugout. rule. I, I think so. I think if you're in the dugout, you got to be in uniform. Yeah. Which is like uh, even the pitching coach is dressed like that. Everybody is. I mean, what, what, so, if, what, if you had, what if you had the first base coach and the third base coach in suits? I, I think it's cool. Oh, well, oh, they're on right, the right, field, though. Got, they're on the oh, field. Wait, hold on, hold on. It started with the tradition of player coaches. So one okay. player on the team would be the coach. Okay. And I think it's just a tradition that at any point in time, the coach could insert themselves in the game. Yeah, but if you're like 68, what are you going to do, bat third? I mean, we're... Well, yeah, you're not on the roster, so now you definitely can't go in. But, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Tommy Lasorda comes out. Who is he putting in? Oh, shit, he's asking for a glove <laughs> himself. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, man. No, I, I – listen. I think a first base and a third base coach with a suit on brings a whole different attitude to the game. I mean, can you imagine the, being the first baseman on the opposite team and you turn around and there's a guy fixing his tie behind yeah. him? Hey, how you doing? You ready to get your ass whipped today? <laughs> yeah. Or the guy at third waving you home, just doing this with the wave, the tie dangling. With the tie what, dangling. What does that say? Oh. <laughs> Oh, uh, the, the dress code. I can't Rule read states that. that all, mem all members of the team must wear identical uniforms. Rule two defines coaches as being members of the team, so it follows that they must also wear the identical uniform. There you go. That's the major league rule. Oh, so man. even if you bought a team and managed it, bro, you can't come out into the dugout in a suit. Speaking of dress, a uh, little side note here. I, I read this thing. I saw it in the news. Steve Jobs, the late great Steve Jobs, used to wear these beat up pair of Birkenstocks, right? You know those. Mm -hmm. I, I would imagine you don't wear those. No, uh, from out of Vermont, those kind of shoes. 
I, I don't, Patrick, if we can get a photo of the late, great Steve Jobs in these things. I don't know if he wore them with socks, but I'm thinking he went full bore barefoot and just Ooh. like really, really got it going in there. They just sold for $216,000 at auction. Now, I mean, I love Billy Joel, but I wouldn't want his fucking sandals, guys. <laughs> well, hey, talking about a conversation piece, right? Let's say you yeah. come over to let's say you come over to my house, right? In right. the living room, over over a glass cube, propped up on a, like a little mantle, are sandals, right? Birkenstocks, and you go, yeah. "Who's that those? Oh, uh, the Steve Jobs Birkenstocks. He he developed the iPhone in those. Why? Literally in those. Yeah. Beautiful. I, 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 I think the only. Oh, I, here we go. We... Oh God, there he is, barefoot. There they are, those Birkenstock, oh, bro. You wow. even could put that photo next to the Birkenstocks. Oh God, yeah, I think it's is there a sock? Two, six... There is a sock. There is a sock guy. <laughs> that is... is good to know in case you. Now, do you think? I wonder if you have Patrick. By the way, you know, I got to tell you, guy, fine work, bro. Really appreciate that. That was like well done. <laughs> um, I think the only way you could go with that in your display is if you got the kind of bread where you got a lot of other things going on. I mean, we use this as an example, but like a Michael Jackson glove, uh, I don't know, a Fonzie jacket. Just so, so as you're going through, oh, wow. I do a slide over to the oh. Wow, right? And then I'm like, what are these? Uh, Steve Jobs. But, like, if you just got those, that's a little weird. If that's, okay, that's yeah. all you got so, in your collection. Okay, so if you had a collection of, let's say, uh, a piece of Michael Jackson's hair, Jobs' right, footwear, right. Uh, Elvis's right. uh, toenail clippers, whatever it is, right? Yeah, yeah. Do you have that all in one place in the house or do you have like the toenail clippers in the living room and then you go into the study <laughs> right, and then you right, see right. another item and then you go into the foyer and then there's a, or yeah. what's your take on where you put all this stuff? That, wow. I mean, I always saw it as one room where you come in and it's just like, you know, grab your coffee, let's go in and we're going to have a lot of fun. I'm going to show you all this beautiful... But you, 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 you might be changing my mind, man. I'm banging a left to go use your bathroom. All of a sudden, I'm looking at George Washington's feathered pen in a glass case. Then I bang a right, and it's like, you know, like we said, Mikey's glove or something. I mean, that's a nice little, makes the walking through the house more enjoyable, never knowing what you're going to come across, you know? Here's one. You go into the bathroom, right? Right over the bathroom is like, a page out of the Declaration of Independence. Oh my! God. Right over the toilet, and you come out of the toilet asking questions to the homeowner. You know, like you, you go in the toilet, right? right? And then you yeah. do your thing. You come out. You don't. That's your personal business. But if right. you got something in there on the wall, and you come yeah. out, and you go, "What the hell was on the wall in there? Oh, what, 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 did you did you see the?" Uh, did you see Abe Lincoln's hat? Yeah, I, I, I don't know what, 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 what. God, who's got that? <laughs> Check to see who's got Abe Lincoln's hat and if that's on auction. Oh my God! <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I don't know, man. I think I gotta, I think I gotta go with one room where I stand in the doorway and I'm like, you're not gonna believe this. I guess I got some cool shit in here. I, I still think I stand by that. Just come in. You're like, what's mm -mm. that? What's that? You know? Nah, I I pepper it around the house. Cause then you gotta go make a make a. You have to go to that room to see it. I like people come in and all of a sudden they're seeing stuff like, oh, oh, you know, oh, my. Here, oh, here it is, here yeah. it is, a hey, blanket. Look, look at that. Oh my god, that is like one of the coolest. <laughs> historical pieces i've ever seen it's Where at the is national that? museum national museum of american history man oh man i gotta go it to looks, that place sometime it looks gold is it gold is that the one he was wearing when he got shot well that's another thing like how does it end up in a museum 
these things. You know, like, how does it... I know. Who gives it to the museum? Well, like, let me ask you this, and I hate to be morbid, right? I hate to be morbid. But somehow you're you're at some function, you know, and the president or whoever it may be of the United States is giving a speech or something, right? And uh, and you're up very close, and all of a sudden in the middle of the speech, we won't even go assassinated, just mid-sentence, just a widow maker hits this guy, and he goes forward with a heart attack. His Ray-Bans land about five feet away from you. Are you grabbing the Ray-Bans and doing a walk away? <laughs> ah, you know what I'm saying? Oh, like, like, cause it's your point. How does Lincoln's hat get into the museum? Because if I was within five feet of that, it would have been passed down from family member to family member in a secret room in Missouri in a basement. Don't tell anybody we got Lincoln's hat. Who, what good Sam is walking up to the fucking museum? <laughs> I thought you might want this, right? Oh, you, you get free admission for life. Free admission for life. The hats were fucking priceless, guy. <laughs> <laughs> So I'm right there with you. How are they getting their hands on this stuff? I don't know. It must be like a, I don't know. I, I have no idea how that ends up in a museum. It must be the family donating it or, or what have you. But again, if, if you have your family, I mean, Italian family especially, they ain't giving away stuff like that. You know, damn well, that, that hat. If, that, if Abe Lincoln was Italian, you know, that hat right. would be on a mantle over the fireplace. <laughs> absolutely man you know nobody tells nobody we got the hat you don't even invite you don't invite anyone into this house until we know they could they won't tell no one about the fucking hat right now what about god it was just on the tip of my tongue shit there we go forgetting about, yeah no i know <laughs> there's, there's pressure on me now forget it it's, it's lost uh, it's... What about, oh i got it back boom let's take the pope we haven't gone to the pope in a while Every man in the world has T-shirts. T-shirt wears out, right? Pope's got some T-shirts. They wear out. He's done with the T-shirt. What happens to the Pope's T-shirts? Do they just go in the garbage or do they... I, I Does, think staff takes them to family and friends, right? Oh, well, hey, make a great point. You know, he he's wearing clothing, socks, underwear, what have you, right? When he's done with a pair of socks, does he bless the socks... And donate them to an orphanage right. or, or I don't know whatever. And then the person that gets the Pope socks, do they know it's the Pope socks? That, well, that I think like to raise money for charity. Does the Pope take a photo in the socks right before he's done with the socks? Then like you call up your Johnny Depp's of the world, go you want a pair of the Pope socks? Thirty k. We'll bring them to you in a frame. <laughs> With a picture of Pope wearing them, and then the thirty k goes to like you know make Ronald McDonald House. What or, or, so, or these socks just getting thrown out, which is insane, right? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. That's a good point. Like the hat the the Pope wears, right? The the what, right. Is, it, what is it? The uh, the pompet? What is it called? Yeah, I, 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 <laughs> the, the 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 crown thing. The, the pompet. You were an altar boy, man. Yeah, but we didn't go over what the Pope was, uh, what, what right. the Pope's outfit looked like. Uh, or here's another one. Right. Does he wear out his Bible? Here, here, here I, I give you. I, when you become the Pope, do you get the do you get other Pope's Bible? Like, is the Bible part of the Vatican? And when you get the job, it's almost like, uh, you know, when you get a new job, they give you like an instruction manual of like what the benefits yeah. are, or what have you. Do you think the Vatican as a, as a Bible that they go, all right, this is, this is the Bible all the popes have used. Or do you go, nah, I'm good. I got my own, I got my own Bible I use. That's, that's a really good question, right? Let's say you get a new Pope in there that's got like this Trump vibe of doing it his own way. And then he's like. Can I just get a fresh Bible? And everyone's like, oh, my God, fresh fucking Bible. Okay. You know, Cleopatra rubbed this Bible, guy. And you, and you, and you want a freshie? <laughs> oh, God. Oh, God, their heads would spin. I, I may have asked this before, and if I have, I apologize. But, right, let's say, or some version of this, crazy things have happened, crazy things have happened. You get a card and a gift in the mail from the Pope 
He's been a big fan from a distance of your stand-up, clean, good, wholesome. Even caught the uh, Baba Ba uh, podcast, uh, heard some of your discussions with Pete. He curses too much. Ha ha, right? Anyway, Pope throws in a T-shirt that he used to wear to you. And, it, and they let you know that, you know, when the Pope is done wearing something, obviously it doesn't get washed. It gets folded and blessed and packaged in this package for you. <clears throat> you wear that T-shirt one night to bed unwashed or at the end of the day, he's still just a man and it's probably a little, a little dirty. I don't touch it. You don't frame, touch it? No, I frame it. I frame it and oh. that, goes in the, that goes on the wall somewhere in the house. Bro, oh, I... I I put it on and make love to my wife. <laughs> How do you not? I mean, I'm, I, I got a vasectomy, but she'd probably get pregnant, dude, after that. <laughs> oh, shit. You don't, you literally don't even, all right, maybe you don't wear it, but you got to take it out, give it a rub or something. Mm-mm, man, that's like whole. That's that's holiness in its pure oh, yeah. form. Put that in a frame, and you put you put him wearing it. Next <sighs> picture of him wearing it, going to bed with it on. It's, it's <sighs> I think. Uh, what do we got on Jackie? There was a there was a Jackie story you had mentioned in the beginning of the cast uh, before we got on. Oh, did I was I saying? Well, I was saying a couple different things, but uh, wasn't gonna say. Um, we got Taylor Swift tickets for Sadie for Christmas. Pooh. We're at Buffalo? Pittsburgh. In Pittsburgh. But Jackie had to go through the process. I don't know if you followed it in the news. It was insane. When First of all, you know when we were growing up how you'd have Casey Kasem's top 10 songs? Like yeah, top yeah. 40, whatever. She was, for the first time ever, the, the top 10 were all her songs at one point. Wow. All 10. The demand they said for tickets for her could have filled 900 stadiums. That's how many people want her tickets. When you went to get them, you had to do a lotto. So I'm you sorry, I gotta, get... I gotta stop. I gotta stop you. Did some did you, like a tooth fall out of your mouth? What, what the hell was no, this? It was my gum. It was my oh, gum. Okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it was my gum, man. It was my gum. Right. Go ahead. I'm there. sorry. Go ahead. Then they had go to ahead. do a lot. You have to do a lotto. Just, just to be able to maybe uh, to no to get tickets. But when you do the lotto, you have to give three cities that you're willing to go to. Can't just say wow. like you know, yeah. And um, <clears throat> what was I gonna say? And then they had three different people doing it. So Jackie's doing it. A friend was doing it, and and all. And they needed. You can get six at once, and they all only needed two each. So they were like, any one of us gets it. We all go with that. And, like, Jackie would call up when she got the lotto, and then the day you call, she was like, you're number 2,700 uh, in weight, you know, and you just, you know, and then it gets down, you're down to 1,000, and then some, another one of their friends got the tickets. So the friend was like, you guys can shut it down, I got them, I got them. So they didn't even have to do it anymore. But some people were waiting for hours, and then... They'd get cut off and never get the t- It was pretty nuts, man. It was pretty nuts, but we, you know, they got some Taylor Swift tickets. Yeah. You just call me. Call you? You need tickets? You call me. What are we waiting in line for? Taylor Swift. Bro, you can get Taylor Swift tickets? What do you mean? <laughs> I don't want to call in a well, favor on like that. Come on, you know. In the future, pick the phone up. FaceTime me. <laughs> you got it, man. You got it. All right, good to know. Damn. Waiting in line for tickets. Come on, guy. Start utilizing the contacts. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, bro. Thank you. But uh, does Serafina like Taylor Swift yet? No. 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 Uh, you know where we're going? We're getting her. Uh, my Actually, my mother bought Lion Lion King tickets for uh, all the grandkids to go see the Lion King. Have you seen oh, it? Oh, nice. Uh, no. Not the, no. Just the I haven't seen it either. I never, I never even seen the movie. 
but uh, apparently the live show is supposed to be spectacular, and uh, and that's what, what. Yeah, she's not into anything. I, I, I kind of. You ever saw the Lion King in any form? No. You gotta see the Lion King. You no, gotta I'll, watch I'll, the movie. It's great. I'll I'll watch it. I'll watch it. Now that You're I'm crying. home and got some time, we're gonna start doing a lot of things that we haven't done before. But I, I got a. I had a moment with my daughter last week. Yeah. And maybe you could reflect on this, but um, she uh, she wants to take showers. She graduated from the nice. bathtub. Right. And she wants to get in the shower, right? And Lana took her to buy, like, she wants, like, her own little shower, like, soap and shampoo and all that. She wants to fix her shower the way she wants it, right? Yeah, yeah. For me... It was a, uh, like, oh, she's, she's growing up, man. She ain't going to be in the bathtub anymore. Not that she's ever not going to take a bath, but, you know, her and Caruso would take a bath together, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, yeah. now poor Caruso's in the bath alone. And she's in the shower. <laughs> yeah, he's probably like, you know what? Stretch my legs a little here, man. <laughs> <laughs> I knew the time was coming, but to just see her in the shower now, it's like, oh, it's yeah. becoming a little girl and little, you know, a little woman and whatnot. I'm like, oh, yeah, my God. man. I don't I know, know what I'm going to do when she starts dating. There's a kid at school that's uh, in love with Serafina. He says he, he loves Serafina. And I'm like, who the fuck is this asshole? <laughs> hey? I know. I know. I know. It's. <laughs> I know Even it's innocent, my, yeah. I, I'm, but I'm just saying, like, I got that like fatherly, <clears throat> you know. We ain't we ain't doing because I could see me getting nuts when she starts dating. Yeah, I know, but like you also like like now, for example, my daughter has a crush on a boy, a particular boy that like, you know, if if she brought him home from college, I, I'd be. Going to Jackie. Oh my God, are you serious with this guy? But but right now you don't even know what a crush is. You know what I mean? So like, I don't like mm. to get to to worry now. It's too soon, don't you think? Uh, I don't know, man. I'm just thinking like, I'll give you a scenario. All right, Sadie's dating a guy. Picks her up to go out, right? And he yeah. uh, he beeps from the driveway you don't yeah. come in and he beeps right this is right, the right. first time they're going out do you as a father go go out there right now and tell that boy you are never going to see him again or do you say tell him to come in or do you go out to the driveway and go gay when you come to pick up my daughter you come inside the house Right. What's your right. take? I tell her, you go tell him, you text him or whatever you got to do. But if he wants to take you out, he comes to the door like a gentleman and introduces himself to your mother and myself and tell him so far, it's probably going to be the last time he gets to take you out. Well, you know? But is that just going to make her get in the car and go, let's just drive to Mexico and fuck Tommy? <laughs> <laughs> you know <laughs> my dad is just repressive you know what i'm saying you know i go i go the other other route i go tell that boy that he ain't gonna ever see you again because right now i start to assess kids not raised right right comes from a a, a weird home that this wasn't discussed like if caruso gonna go pick up a girl I tell Caruso before he leaves the house, when you go pick up this girl, you make sure you go to the door, introduce yourself to the family, sit down, have yeah. a cup of coffee, get to know these people, and then you take the girl out. So I don't know. That, that's that's an yeah. upbringing thing, man. Yeah, I, man. I, I, I see a lot of problems if the kid ain't coming to the door. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. I couldn't agree more, man. But, you know, I mean. It's like right out of a movie. What is this grease? This guy just gives a big honk. It's expecting to climb out the window and shimmy down the the fucking lattice. Is that what they call it? I think. Yeah. The lattice is that. The lattice. Wow, what a reference. Beautiful. 
All right, what else you got there, bro? <sighs> what else you, do I you got? You got Italian takes over there? What do you got? Uh, man, they're not really Italian takes. I mean, I tried to put something together that I, I, uh, I do, I do have a couple here. Like the his first Italian take. <clears throat> the Birkenstocks would be a perfect example, actually. What is your take on when it's like, for example, winter, and then you have East Coast, I'm saying it's the winter, and then all of a sudden you get an unseasonably 62, 63 degree day, right? <clears throat> Which can also be a cold summer day, right? So then people come out in Birkenstocks or sandals because it's temperature wise, you could get away with a sandal. But season-wise, it's winter, and it's only going to be this warm for this one day. What's your take on wearing out-of-season season wear when the temperature sneaks <laughs> into into another season? You know what I'm saying? I keep it in the season we're in, regardless of the temperature. Me too. Me too. I, I mean, like I, I go to the store... Like, and people are in flip flops because it's sixty three degrees out the other day in the middle of it's like you know it's Christmas time. I, th- I'm, I thank you. No, thank man. you. I I don't I don't see the because you know what bothers me about that that person got excited that it was unseasonably warm and they're yeah. like ooh this is a chance to go and get my, and they had to go somewhere and find the sandals because they're not like readily available. Oh, right, eh? right, right, right. And I could just see them in their closet seeking this shit out. And and, it, and that, that's a turn off. <laughs> oh, God. I'm right there with you, bro. They're making such a statement about it. I can wear them because I can. Look at me. And then, and then it's cold the next day and you're a lazy ass. So now your sandals are out next to your winter boots a week a week before Christmas. Freaking animal. I'm right there with you. So, oh, listen, God. I got a story for you, okay? Yeah. A couple of weeks ago, I get pulled over, right? I'm coming home. I got Jackie and Sadie. We're going down one of these side roads, Route 20 from Buffalo. 40 miles an hour. And it, it, I'm sorry, it was 55, but then it goes down to 40, right? Now, it just turned the 40, and I get clocked doing, like, 63. Cop pulls me over, right? Listen, I respect cops beyond. Cop was super nice. I even did the, had my hands up here when he came over. Got my wife, my daughter. It was one of those, I feel like it's a cop. It's one of those when you see in and see it's a family, and you go, oh, okay, this will be, I'm not going to have a violent incident right now, thank God. Is it cold out? Yeah, it's cold out, yeah. Okay, all right, go ahead. Not freezing, but cold out, right? right. So uh, he gets at, he comes over, and right away he goes, license and registration. And as I go, I go, sorry, officer, as I go to hand it to him, <clears throat> he goes, going a little fast there. And I go, it was 50. I'm sorry, I, yeah. I'm sorry. Do you have your license and registration out before he gets to the car, or... Are you not making any sudden movements as he's approaching, like going into the glove compartment, which might suggest you're going in for a firearm? How do you work the uh, registration and, and license on a pullover? I thought of that. It was, it's interesting. Um, I went right for here. And I said to Jackie, can you just get me the license and registration out of the glove? You know? But I stayed here because I felt like, you know, I don't want to think I'm up to no good or anything because I wasn't. And then when he came over, I can't help but be nervous when I'm around police. And I, I can't preface enough. I'm not hiding anything. There was, I wasn't smoking, nothing. There's nothing to be worried about because he goes, license and registration. Now, Jackie has a registration. She hands it to me and I hand them my wallet. And he goes, I don't need your whole wallet. I just need your license. I give him a whole money clip. And I'm like, oh, sorry, because it was on top. So as I hand it to him, I go, he goes, you were doing 63. And I go, yeah, but it was 55. I mean, you know, and he goes, it was 40. And I go, I, I go, yeah, but it, I, go, I said to him, I go, it just turned to 40 pretty quickly there. And he goes, no, there was already two signs that said it was 40. And he said, there was already two signs that says, like, he said in a way where I'm like, mm, you're saying it like you've had this argument a couple times already today, guy. Speed trap, speed trap. 
And then he looks at my license and he goes, Temple Street, you're the third person I pulled over today that lives on Temple Street. And I wanted to say, yeah, because we're all driving home and you got a speed trap going here. Yeah, that's why, mm-hmm. you know. But, of course, I wouldn't say that, you know. And I think that's when I said I was only doing blah, blah, blah. And uh, he goes, no, it was 40 and you were doing 63. And I go, man, even my uh, thing still said 55. My GPS said you could still be doing 55. No, bro, it was already too. Bro, yeah. bro, man, my God, I'm sorry, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta cut you off here. I'm a cop, and I'm hearing this. I'm writing the ticket while I'm standing next to the car with the 55 um, and my GPS and this and that. You shut your mouth, right, right, no, and let him just. I'm sorry. That's it. That's all you're saying. I'm sorry. It's Christmas time. I wanted to get home. We got, you know, want to decorate the tree. You don't, you don't like, what are you combative for? This is how people get fucking stun gunned. Listen, I, I'm remembering it, but I said it all very quickly at once to him. I looked over. I said, here you go, officer. I go, sorry. I thought it was, it said four. How'd I put it? I go, sorry, it was 55 on my thing here still. And I didn't realize it went up down to 40. He goes, well, there were two signs already. And then he said, you're the third person I pulled over. And I was like, oh, like that. So that I, I only had one comment, but I'm remembering oh, okay, it all. Okay. That's why I'm stuck. Right. But anyway, I had to say my piece. So then uh, he goes to write me the ticket and he comes back and he goes, uh, yeah, listen, he, he goes, uh, okay, so here's the ticket. And then he goes, but you can see this box here. If you plead not guilty um, and mail it in not guilty, then they will change it to a blah, blah, blah which is a, a non-speeding violation and it'll, uh, it'll still be a ticket. I mean, you'll still pay, but it'll be a non-speeding violation and no points on your license, right? And I'm like, why? I'm already like, why am I getting this like break? You know what I mean? Because the whole thing was like a little suspect, I felt, right? But anyway, I'm like, oh, okay, thank you, officer. Um, and then he goes, all right, have a good evening. And again, all the respect in the world for the cops. I drive off. And I start driving off. I get, I don't know, maybe 50 yards down the road. He he lights me up again. I'm like, oh, yeah, what the heck, right? So I pull over. He pulls over. He gets out. He starts walking towards my car, and he yells out, I don't like the way you pulled out. And I go, sir, I'm so sorry. I just, and he goes, I'm just kidding, man. I forgot to give you a license back. I forgot, and he gave me my license, right? Now... I just don't know if that's appropriate time for a joke when you just jack me for what ended up being a two hundred forty dollar <laughs> ticket. You know, I I almost feel like my license should have been given back to me with the. And listen, I'm so sorry for the whole convenience and, and a rip up, a, a ticket rip up. It's like you spilled my spaghetti on me when you were serving me at the restaurant. Wouldn't my spaghetti be free? The fact that he forgot to give you the license back. And a cop or not, whatever. It, this is a. This is. I'm looking this at as a business transaction. Right. It's like uh, they forgot to bring out your side of asparagus with your steak, right? Yeah. And, you go, and, and you're like, I ordered asparagus, and you go, oh. oh. And they go get it and they come back. You don't get charged for that. asparagus. They didn't even. They forgot to make it. So by the time they're going to get it out to me, I'm going to yeah. be halfway done with my stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So would you expect the asparagus to be taken off the bill or the entire steak? Entire steak. Okay. St- entire steak because the steak needs its asparagus to go with it. I mean, you know. And, yeah. and bro, I, he put, I could have I could have gone into cardiac arrest, guy. Doing a double pullover? It's very oh, scary. I was, yeah, no, a double pullover. And then, and then <laughs> cause you hear and what was the first thing that went through your mind when you heard I don't like the way you pulled out? Are, did, was was jail at all in your head? No, but I <laughs> I was thrown, but I was I believed him. But I thought he thought more about my comment about I didn't think I was speeding. I mean I was yeah, I thought it was still 55. I thought he decided he didn't like my uh, comment there and that he was coming back to, uh, mm-hmm. you know. Listen, 
I'm joking as far as you forget a license, I get it and all that, but um No. I, I felt like he forgot to give me back my license because when he was writing the ticket he was riddled with guilt knowing it's a speed trap. And and he just forgot he even had the license. He barely wanted to give me the ticket, you know? That's what I'm thinking. Do you think when he pulls you over he, the ticket is pending based on the interaction he has with each driver or is he already made up his mind you're getting a ticket i don't care who you are in the car or what happens in the conversation i'm writing you a ticket today or do you think it's based on oh this guy's a nice guy let him go what do you think right i, I honestly i think for years it was based on once in a while you let a nice person go if they're clearly respecting law enforcement you know once in a while but now, I think now it's based on they look in the window and they make a judgment and thinking, if we write this guy a ticket, will he actually mail a fucking check that won't bounce and pay it? <laughs> and if the answer is yes, then they write the ticket. If they look in and go, this slug ain't going to mail this shit in, then why bother? You know, then we're just giving ourselves more workers. Now we're going to have a warrant for that person. So, yeah. you know, it's almost like the turnstile in New York City. You know, some people pay it, some people jump. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so, you know, we've prided ourselves on the Pete and Sebastian show of being a lifestyle type of podcast, Absolutely. and a lot of people are using the podcast to raise their kids, right, based on what we, we share. The information we share is valuable information. Now, I am going to give my technique of when I get pulled over, and this technique what it does it it puts the cops mind at ease similar to what you did with the 10 and 2 on the wheel all right right yeah i'm going to take it a, a step further all right? all right and i've i've learned this f from law enforcement so I, i've been told this by law enforcement you get pulled over immediately roll down your window and take your car keys And put them on the roof. Have we discussed this before? I don't know. Maybe we have, but I feel like I don't remember that. That seems like uh... on the roof. Now, I know a lot of cars are may, might be push button start, right? Yeah, yeah. But if you if you still have the car, that the keys have to be in the ignition to 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 turn it on. This signifies to the officer. Yeah, I'm not pulling away. Right, right. It's Even if it's key key start, like the like you said, the automatic, you put that on the roof, the car won't start. So. Yeah, it, it got to be in the car. It's got to be near the. So, non verbally, what that signifies to the officer is that this ain't going to be a high speed chase on the four hundred five. All right, just by yeah. doing that, that calms them down. Now, I like your technique on the ten and two, but I'm going to take it a step further. All right, I'm going to go hands out the window. No. Oh, man. No. Right, As he right, approaches, because right. the way you got it, they're still in the car. There could still be a firearm or something in the car where you could reach. Hands out the window. Again, nonverbal signifies to the officer, this guy is compliant. Uh, there is no firearm in the car. And if there is, I'm going to have enough time to react if he pulls them back. You know, like... It's just right. basically another nonverbal, right? Now, the third thing. You shut your mouth. You don't say nothing. He comes up to the car. You just answer the questions. You know what I pulled you over for? Uh, I'm sorry, sir. Officer, what? You got a left tail light out. Okay. Thank you. You know, polite, whatnot. But before he gets into that, he's going to ask you for the license and registration. Now, what I do, and this is the third key point in the conversation license and registration you tell the officer my license is in my left back pocket may i proceed okay because right right if you will license and registration and you and you go into the glove compartment or go and, and reach this could be hey, misconstrued hey, 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 yeah hey, hey, hey. <laughs> 
Now, a lot of people out there might not know these steps, okay? Right, right. And a lot of people, if you don't know these steps, you could get killed, all right? All right, I, I, I'm, a, I'm a big, and I know you're a fan of the boys in blue too, but like, I feel like when you come up, I come up to you, I'm a cop, and you put your keys up there, and your yeah. hands out the window, right away I'm thinking, oh God, I'm pulling over Antifa, and they're making a point. Like, like I feel like you're doing a mini protest. Like, don't beat me, don't beat me. It's like no, a no, bit, no. it's no, a no, lot, no. guy. Hands no, no. out the window. It's out the window. I'm going for my. Can, I mean, yeah. No, no, no. It's, it's it's not it's not as robotic as I'm making it sound. But what this does also, and yeah. if you have any personality, this starts a conversation possibly, where the guy right. goes, he almost laughs. I had a guy laugh at me for doing this. He goes, you can put your hands back in the car. You know, like, yeah, and all of yeah. a sudden it loosens up the all mood. Right. Where it's not so, right. you know, authoritative and uh, you know, license and registration. He's like, and I and, and I go, and I, I go, yeah, just doing my part here, you know. It, it just it, it shows. I ain't gonna be fucking with you, all right. Right. That's right. all. It's not it. Antifa, you know what that is? That those those people that like fuck with the police, they put the window down, two two uh two inches, right? And and the guy goes. Roll down your window. He's like, it's uh, that's that's a uh, 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 law six eight nine six in the pit. You know, says I could. You know, they start rattling off bullshit. Right? <laughs> they look at the their passenger. Are you getting all this, Carol? Keep it filming. Keep it filming. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and then they ask for the license. <laughs> by, by law, I am not required to give you the license. And the next thing you know, that motherfucker's <laughs> dragged out of his car, <laughs> and he's on he's on the street getting his ass kicked. <laughs> That's it. Oh, oh man, I get you bring up a good point, but I felt when I did the ten and two when I got pulled over, I felt the cop looked at me doing the ten and two and was thinking, "This guy's doing the ten and two, thinking he's going to get out of a ticket because he's doing, you know, got his hands up here." So, you know, but no hands out. I'm going to try that next time. I mean, hey, listen, anything that makes the cop. Not get nervous. I'm in for you. Know what I mean? It's 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 got to be nerve wracking every single time they walk up to a car. I can't even imagine. Here's another one, and the reason I asked if it was cold out, especially if you got kids in the car, you roll down all four windows, all four, right? So you got kids yeah. in the back, right? He comes up to the car. He sees children disarmed. He's disarmed. Two kids in the car. I know what I'm dealing with. So there's a lot of things I think you could do prior to the even anybody talking that would signify to the police officer you're pulling over a law-abiding citizen, and I ain't looking for any trouble. Right. Yeah. Now, that little piece, that little piece of what I just did, mm -hmm. you could clip that out, right? Before you guys have dinner tonight, and if you if you got kids that are getting their license. You play that speech on, on the TV before you have dinner as a family. Absolutely. And that is the lesson of the day. And that's what makes this podcast not only humorous and entertaining, but it's a good supplement for your parenting techniques. I, I agree. There's a lot to be learned. I mean, listen, I get college kids coming up to me all the time. Going, I listen to you guys throughout college. I may have learned more from you guys than I did in college, to be honest with you. Teach you about life, baby. That's it. Pete and Sebastian show. Ten years running and still not in the top 200. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, not, man. There you have it, people. I mean, who knew? we just been doing this thing uh, for the last ten years for nothing every week every week every Thanks for week not getting sick of me bro i appreciate that man yeah, well vice versa bro I mean, yeah, jesus yeah, 10 nah, years with anybody is a nightmare yeah. um, <laughs> <laughs> Shit. jack um, son! I think we got two months left 
Shit. All right, there you have it, people. Pete and Sebastian show. Uh, Patreon. Go to the Patreon page. It's uh, it's cooking over there. We got five dollars yeah. a month. It's a, it's a, it's the price of a cup of coffee. And what Fun you're times. getting in return is a, a well full of comedy and knowledge. So go there, sign up. Patreon, Pete and Sebastian show. Um, also, I want to plug in, and we didn't talk about this on the uh, on the cast, but I have another podcast that I'm doing with uh, my pediatrician, Dr. Scott Cohen. It's called Daddy yes. vs. Doctor. It's a call-in show, people. Right, so if right. you're out there, you got kids, you got questions, about your kid's health, behavioral issues, whatever it might be, you call in. Doctor will give you some medical advice. I'll sprinkle some of my my humor and personal stories within the uh, within each caller, and it's uh, it's educational and it's infotainment. That's what it basically is. So and he's a funny it. guy too. <clears throat> Yeah, the doctor's a funny guy too. I hung out with him. He's a, he's yeah. So you get to yeah, get Pete entertainment and information. Go to daddyversedoctor.com, and we do every Friday a new episode. So check that out there. And that's it. We will see you guys next week. Thank you. Uh, what do you got, Pat? Uh, point out that on Patreon, they get the Pete and Sebastian show one day early and ad-free. Pete and Sebastian show. You heard it right here on the Pete and Sebastian show from Patrick. You get the regular show on Patreon, our regular show, a day early, no ads. So that is another incentive, incentive right. to uh, to join the uh, Patreon page. So we will see you next week, and we will also see you on Patreon. As for me, Sebastian Mascalco, Pete Corielli on the other end, and Patrick here in uh, uh, his, his throne. We will see you guys next week.